absolutely been the hot, most hardest thing I've ever done. I have missed my sister so much and her children and her husband, and it's just been devastating. Now on 13 on your side, an emotional day for many as the border officially reopens to non-essential travel for the first time in nearly two years. Plus, that means it's back to business for many local shops who've been waiting for this news with bated breath. We speak with the Yuma County Chamber of Commerce about the expected surge in travel. And a fourth suspect is now in custody following an attempted armed robbery at the Chevron in the foothills. 13 on your side starts now. And thank you for joining us on 13 on your side. I'm Scott Gross. We go to coverage right now of the borders reopening. Here's our very own Arlette Youssef. Yes, Mercedes, I'm at the San Luis port of entry and surprisingly things were pretty calm this morning, but we could see a surge later this week. As the U.S. border restrictions loosen up, people from Mexico and other countries with visas can enter the country if they have been fully vaccinated against COVID-19. They asked me for proof of vaccination. The one I have is a simple one. It is printed and it was the only thing they asked me to do. They didn't ask me for anything else. Diaz says the Customs and Border Protection officers were kind as they asked for her proof of vaccination. I'm really happy because being here after the pandemic, I'm finally going to eat hamburgers from the United States, which are the ones we want. And then let's see what changes there are here. What's new? But the truth is, I'm happy. Another woman from Mexico says she is excited to see her daughter after so long. I'm going to see my daughter. I have not seen her for about seven months. And yesterday, I even got sick from the anxiety that I had. The officer was very kind and just asked me about the vaccines, if I had them, and I said yes. He did not ask me for anything. Family seems to be the driving force for many at the border. Jennifer Villa lives in the States and goes to Mexico every weekend to visit her dad. She says usually there are long lines, but today there was no wait. I think for us it's like more easy because they don't ask us like and just, oh, why do you came to Mexico? What do you have right now? Like what are you bringing back? After so many restrictions over the last nearly two years, people are slowly shifting their lives once again. And a reminder to all U.S. citizens, you do not need to show proof of COVID vaccination at this time. Only non-U.S. citizens must carry proof of vaccination on them while crossing into the country. Reporting from the San Luis border, Arlette Youssef, 13 on your side. Now over to the border in Calexico, where businesses in downtown came to a halt when the borders closed more than a year and a half ago. The city says it lost millions of dollars in revenue. Vinci Barra continues her team coverage from Calexico. Yes, good evening. There's been a steady flow of folks coming over to downtown Calexico, but it's not overwhelming. The mayor of Calexico says he expects more Mexican residents to cross the border in the coming days. Well, obviously we're excited, right? And we're here at Open Arms. We've been waiting for almost, what, 19 months? Medero says the city is ready to get back to some normalcy. He says business in Calexico has suffered since the borders closed. Calexico lost over $5 million in revenue. For us, the impact and the results, we're not going to see it yet. Moreno urges businesses in the area to be patient as it expects to see more non-essential travelers make their way over to Calexico. He walked around the downtown area talking to local business owners about grant money that will soon become available. We're also working um, hand in hand with the local governments, the state, the federal. We got some ARBA money coming in. Jesus Gallardo owns three businesses in downtown Calexico. He says the city needs the borders to always stay open. We were missing the economy that we had from them. They are a big part of our money interest. He's hopeful with the reopening of the borders, his business will get back to generating profits like before COVID. He understands hesitation from some who might want to keep the borders closed, but says it's time to get back to a new normal. Everything else is open. Everything else, if you, there are concerts, there are venues, there are the big markets, the big companies are open. We should open for them too. He says the city needs to work on improving its economy so businesses in Calexico can get back to the way things were before COVID changed all of our lives. Now going back to the state and federal help Mayor Medeno is promising, he says local business owners will have upwards of $10,000 to help during this transition with the borders reopening. 
He says his office is open to you if you're a local business owner. Reporting in downtown Calexico, I'm Vince Barra. Callie, there were long lines at the Calexico West port of entry. Calexico East also had some activity. Motorists who crossed to Calexico for the first time after restrictions were imposed due to COVID say they were happy to go shopping to purchase items they could not find in Mexico. I buy many personal items in the United States and because when there were restrictions to cross, I struggled a lot to find those products in Mexico. Right now, since I can cross, I'm going to buy some things for the house and for my business. I thought I was going to make a lot of line. I even brought my lunch, but I have only been 45 minutes in the line, and it's advancing really fast. And the governor of Baja, California, said that it will help both borders to recover their economy soon. Continuing our border reopening coverage, non-essential travel also helps our winter visitors from up north. While a lot of our attention is on the border in our backyard, vaccinating Canadians can now also cross the borders. Many Canadians come down to Yuma to live here during the winter. And we spoke to the Yuma Chamber of Commerce about the impact our winter visitors from up north have on our economy. It's because a lot of our snowbirds come from Canada. Last I heard, it's about 30% of our snowbirds come from Canada. So that's a huge number of people that may not have been able to get here before. Of course, they could fly, but they couldn't bring their RVs here. So unless their RV was stored here or they already had some sort of housing here, they were unable to come. Call also says that many businesses are just excited to see their loyal customers from Canada again that they haven't seen for over a year and a half. Arizona Senator Mark Kelly will be visiting Yuma tomorrow to tour the San Luis Port of Entry. He is scheduled to meet officials from the Customs and Border Protection to discuss port improvement, including how to reduce wait times and improve security. Senator Kelly, along with other government officials, pushed for the bipartisan infrastructure bill that was recently passed by the Senate and House. The bill will invest and improve several Arizona structures, such as roads and the ports of entry, while also creating more jobs. The Biden administration is sending out deportation notices to 78,000 migrants. These individuals were recently released into the U.S. after crossing the border with Mexico. According to two sources, they received notices to report when they arrived instead of notices to appear. A notice to report puts the onus on migrants to initiate their own legal process instead of giving them a specific court date. Now, officials are sending packets with that information. Immigration advocates worry the packets might not reach migrants who don't have an official address. That would cause them to miss their court dates and possibly be removed from the country without due process. A fourth suspect is now in custody following an attempted armed robbery at the Chevron in the foothills. Now you remember by now the Marine veteran who foiled the robbery has since gone viral for his heroic actions. The Yuma County Sheriff's Office tell us an 18 year old is now charged with aggravated assault, armed robbery and endangerment. He's identified as Donovan Asud and remains behind bars on a $150,000 bond. The other three suspects are all juveniles. They're facing similar charges. And now to some breaking news out of Yuma. This video captured earlier tonight from our Skycam. A house caught on fire around 8 o'clock on 1st Avenue at last check. The street was still closed off and firefighters are still at the scene monitoring hot spots. The Yuma Fire Department tell us no one was currently living there. The investigation remains underway. Now back to that sky cam. This is the RV World of Yuma sky cam. Or look outside. We're still holding at 70 degrees in Yuma, 65 degrees in El Centro. A very good Monday evening to all of you out there. Clear skies. You can see the sliver of the moon out there as well and a slight breeze. But will clouds, well, they're going to start to move into the area here very soon. And those gusty winds will return as well. Now coming up in your first alert forecast, a gradual cool down. We may have just had it today as we're about to get back into the 90s. Gusty winds, as I mentioned, will return and we have a fantastic viewer weather photo to share. All of this coming a little bit later on in the show. Coming up next on 13 on your side, an update on the search for a missing mom continues in the Imperial Sand Dunes nearly a year since she seemingly vanished tonight. The latest on the investigation and who is facing charges. 
Are you looking for the best carne asada tacos? Taco Monster is the real deal. Try our carne asada fries, quesabirrias, and tacos with handmade tortillas. We specialize in keto burritos. Come get your feast on at Taco Monster in Yuma. Every year you've welcomed us into your homes. Introduced us to your family and friends. And included us in your festivities. You've played with us. One with us. And together, we've built a tradition of giving back to our communities. I, I won! So this holiday season, let's continue the tradition and celebrate together. My name is William Yank. I'm a 23-year-old, three-time leukemia survivor. One evening, my roommate was trying to talk to me, and I responded to him in a delirium of mess and confusion. And he said, we're going to the ER immediately and came back with leukemia. They started me on chemos, they started me on a bunch of antibiotics, but the chemo wasn't exactly working. So my oncologist decided that he wanted to try me with CAR T cell therapy. And it worked. Leukemia Lymphoma Homeless Society was this unforeseen blessing for me because I wouldn't have been able to get CAR T cell therapy. It got that FDA approval in 2017, and I wouldn't have had that option had the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society not moved that forward. We are about nine months and feeling very healthy, strong, and I live. To give or get help, visit LLS.org. Do it for music. For the fans. For the journey. Do it for our waiters, our neighbors, our nurses. Do it for love, our kids, our parents. Do it for those who didn't get the chance. When it's your turn, do it, because it's the right thing to do. Taco Monster has mouth-watering choices like quesadillas, fry bread tacos, keto quesadillas. Enjoy a beer with our assorted bucket special every day. Taco Monster is the real deal. Come and see what everyone is raving about. An update now, it's been 10 months since Maya Miliete went missing from her home in Chula Vista, but tonight the search for her remains continues. David Gottfriedson traveled to the Glamis Sand Dunes this past weekend where volunteers teamed up with family members to search for Maya. The search for missing mother Maya Miliete concentrated on a series of desert washes east of the Glamis Sand Dunes in Imperial County. Volunteers dug up this area after finding evidence that something had been burned, but found nothing. They keep an eye out for clothing or bones and mark items of interest like this animal bone. Maya's sister, Mary Chris Droulet, says the whole family camped out at Glamis at least four times in 2020, including the weekend before the mother of three went missing. She really appreciates the volunteer search effort. To drive two hour, three hours drive, you know, from the San Diego area all the way to come down here just to help us search. So it is um, heartwarming. Maya's husband, Larry Miliete, is now in the Vista jail being held without bail as he waits to be tried on murder charges in the death of his wife. Prosecutors believe he was driving this vehicle, a 2015 Lexus SUV with personalized license plate Melani, on January 8th, 10 months ago, when he is suspected of dumping his wife's body about two and a half hours away from his Chula Vista home. In the area east of Glamis over the weekend, a volunteer spotted this battery-operated wildlife camera hidden in the bushes. It's motion activated and records video. If you happen to have video from one of these devices from January 8th, check it out. If you have dash cam video from January 8th, check it out. Nice. Prosecutors need to know the whereabouts of Larry Miliete and that black Lexus SUV on January 8th. I believe, sir, that you understood what your orders were. This coming Wednesday, Mary Chris will attend a court hearing where she is seeking guardianship of Maya's three children. 
They currently are living with Larry's parents in Chula Vista. And Mary Chris is vowing to keep the weekend searches going, even if she gets custody of the kids. I want to give them answers. I want to bring their mom home. Now, new details have emerged following the deadly Astro World Music Festival in Houston, headlined by Travis Scott. Several lawsuits have already been filed against the rapper in connection to the incident. CBS's Anthony Pura reports. The FBI has joined the investigation into the deaths of eight people during a Travis Scott concert in Houston on Friday night. The victims included a 16-year-old girl and a 14-year-old boy. The air was literally slowly squeezed out of him sending his heart into cardiac arrest. An attorney representing some of the victims said a lack of crowd control led to concert goers being crushed and suffocated. I think it's self-evident that this concert was planned incredibly poorly, that no regard was given to the safety of these young people. Cell phone videos show fans calling for help as the music played on. Officials are trying to understand why the show kept going. Travis Scott took the stage around 9 p.m. By 9.30, fans were collapsing. The festival was declared a mass casualty event at 9.38, but Scott's performance continued until after 10 p.m. He paused briefly at one point to direct medics to an audience member. We need somebody to help him. Somebody pass out right here. Scott and the promoters of Astroworld say they are cooperating with investigators. Scott is also offering to pay each of the victims funeral expenses. Anthony Pura, CBS News, Los Angeles. And look outside once again on the RV World of Yuma Sky Cam. Pretty nice out there. You can see the stars, the moon, but those winds are going to return. Gusty winds. When? I'll let you know straight ahead in your first alert forecast. Distracted driving affected us. Our beautiful daughter Ashley was only 12 years old when a distracted driver went through the light and ran into our van. Little did we know, it was the last time we would see her alive. The van rolled a couple times and it hit the side that Ashley was on. It turned our world upside down. I lost a sister. I would never be able to get that back again. I think that people should not be on their phones as much and text and drive because life is more important. Ah, finally. My path has led me here. It's the perfect vehicle for exploring right before my very eyes. And look, nothing could stop me now. Oh wait, that's simply extraordinary. Wow, for a certified used Toyota, this might be my biggest discovery yet. We make it easy. Toyota, let's go places. When kids need medical care, they will often face stressful and life-changing experiences. From complex treatments to long hospital stays, these special patients miss out on the things that most kids take for granted and let kids be kids. That's where Starlight Children's Foundation comes in. Since 1982, Starlight Children's Foundation has transformed the in-hospital experience for more than 17 million seriously ill kids in 800 children's hospitals and facilities across the United States. Our state-of-the-art programs like Starlight Virtual Reality, Starlight Hospital Wear, and Starlight Gaming let kids just be kids, if even for a few moments. Whether donning an action figure gown instead of standard hospital issue, or settling into gamer mode, if it brings a smile, a laugh, or just a break from their reality, it's happiness delivered. Learn more at starlight.org. That's starlight.org. Breaking news first. Extreme weather, first. Border issues, first. Agriculture, first. Exclusive stories, first. If it affects you, your family, your wallet, or your health. 13 on your side, first at four. Join Mercedes Martinez. 13 on your side. It's all first at 4 p.m. Welcome to 13 on your side. A very good Monday evening to all of you across the desert southwest. We're holding at 68 degrees right now in Yuma under mostly clear skies. Hope you're adjusting to that time change. The sun uh, set today at 543 in Yuma, 447 
in El Centro on the California side. So a lot of you driving home today from work in the dark. <laughs> it's been almost a year since since we had that. Let's take a look outside on the RV world of Yuma Sky Cam. Very dark out there right now. Absolutely. Again, mostly clear skies. A great night to do some stargazing. Also a very light wind out there as well. You can just see the tops of that tree moving back and forth just a little bit. Let's take a look at our satellite and radar. Show you what we have throughout the area or lack thereof. We've got bookends of clouds over here and we've got clouds over here. And as we zoom into the area, uh, very clear. Uh, we will start to see some clouds moving in uh, early on in the morning into the afternoon, but for the most part, we're still quite clear. A look at our future cast shows that we do have a weather system moving in here to the western portion of the United States, Northern California, getting some rain as is the Rocky Mountains and uh, a wider view of this on our satellite and radar. Once again, you can see some heavy rain just in the uh, San Francisco area and north of there all along that western coast into the Pacific Northwest. A big cloud cover uh, right over Texas as well and some showers moving through the Midwest. Right back here, our future wind scale. Again, we're in the single digits and will be until tomorrow morning. And then right after lunchtime, we're going to see some gusty winds make their way throughout Imperial County. Uh, winds anywhere between 20 and 30 miles per hour. So hang on to your hats about this time tomorrow. Those gusty winds are returning. A look at our air quality index brought to us by the Imperial County Air Pollution Control District. One little change from the 6 o'clock hour. Calexico now moderate. A change from moderate uh, was good earlier on. Uh, Brawley, Nyland, and Westmoreland still hanging on with good readings right now. A look right now at our temperatures. We're starting to cool off. Imperial's at 63. El Centro 68. Holtville 65. Palo Verde, you're at 66. And across the county and state line into Yuma County, Arizona, 68 in Yuma, 68 San Luis, 66 in Summerton, and 70 in the foothills. Our viewer photo of the day today comes from Tommy Matthew Calderon, Sunday Night Sunset, an absolutely gorgeous photo. Thank you so much, Tommy, for thinking of me and sending this over to us. I really enjoy sharing it with everybody else out there. If you have a photo, we certainly want to see it. Scan this QR code. It'll take you right to the Weather Photo Gallery. Once you're there, you can upload your photo from your phone, include your name, a small description, or you can find me on social media. Uh, Tommy found me on Facebook, or you can drop it off on our homepage, kyma.com slash share. Real quickly, your seven-day forecast. We're about to warm up. Our average for this time of year is 80, 81. Uh, we'll be at 85 tomorrow. 90s are coming back as well, and those gusty winds will return Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Same can be said for the Imperial Valley. A breezy day tomorrow. Again, 90s on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Girls, this is your chance to show that resilience that we've been talking about. An unlikely path to a CIF Division Championship. The Central Spartans shock the Imperial Valley. Find out their improbable story straight ahead in sports. From our workshop to your heart, Paul Benzel Jewelers is here the entire way to help you find the perfect one. Create your forever with Paul Benzel Jewelers. Want payday to come a little faster? I get paid two days before everyone else. I love getting paid on a Wednesday. Want to say goodbye to those long check cashing lines? I can never see myself standing in a line at a bank again. Get your own NetSpend prepaid MasterCard with direct deposit. Your money loads straight into your NetSpend card. Shop online, pay bills, buy groceries. Use anywhere debit MasterCard is accepted. I use it every day for every purchase. I use it to pay my rent. It's not a credit card. It's convenient, and you can even earn payback rewards on many of your purchases. That's money right back into your card account. From eating at major restaurants to sending my mom flowers, I get cash back. Because this is not a credit card, with NetSpend, you pay no interest fees, late fees, or activation fees. There's no credit check to get started and no cost to order. I use my NetSpend card for everything. Be one of the first 200 callers and choose your card color, 1-800-431-0569. That's 1-800-431-0569. Get paid up to two days faster with NetSpend. Do you worry about going to the dentist? After all, a visit to the dentist can easily cost $2,000 or more. Well, relax. The Carefree Dental Card is now available in your area. Call now and we'll send your actual card at no cost today. 
With the Carefree Dental Card, you go to the dentist whenever you need and you instantly pay a lot less. Activate your card and you can start using it immediately. From exams and cleanings to more expensive procedures like crowns, dentures, even braces, they're all included with the Carefree Dental Card. Say you go to the dentist today without any card and your bill is, well, ouch. Wait a minute, let's try that again. You go to the dentist today and show your Carefree Dental Card, you save $525. The Carefree Dental Card is just $15.95 a month, and everyone in your household can use the same card. Call 1-800-997-4110 to receive your free Carefree Dental Card information kit. Call 1-800-997-4110 now. Down 24-22, and... Had it been any other game in any other point in our season, um, I don't know that our girls would have had the will or the drive to push through and actually believe that they can score those last four points. Um, and so for them to actually push through and win that set, what that was, I was most proud of them for that. While head coach Christina Bird was hired the day before tryouts were to be held for the Spartans, Bird took over a very young team with no players having any varsity experience. Her and assistant coach Ivana Lopez took on a one-game-at-a-time approach and also preached resiliency. It's because of their resi resiliency that they are now the CIF San Diego Section Division V champions. The Spartans entered the playoffs as a number three seed and quickly disposed of Palo Verde in straight sets. They defeated the second seeded Del Lago Academy on the road in five sets before meeting Kearney in the final. Up two sets but trailing the Comets 24-22 in the third set. Head coach Christina Bird called a timeout and after, the Spartans won the next four points en route to the division title. Girls, this is your chance to show that resilience that we've been talking about. Um, and so, like, you guys have to believe that you can go out and get it. Um, and they did. And so, yeah, I think, honestly, like, when they won, I was just so proud. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, they were happy they won, but I was, I was just proud of them for pushing through. Super surreal, just seeing, like, like, I don't know, the fact that it happened in three sets, it almost felt like there's no way, like, I don't know. For me, it was super surreal. It's crazy. The Spartans are now the 13th seed in the southern section of the state playoffs and will travel to Los Angeles tomorrow to face the fourth seed, Chatsworth. Congrats, ladies, on a fantastic season and best of luck in the state playoffs tomorrow. And we take you now to the home opener in the house with Kyle Isaacs and AWC men's basketball hosting Andrew Robinson in the Imperial Valley College. New AWC Sports Information Director Michael Broskowski calling the game. First possession of the game, Evan Butts drives in the paint for the Matadors, gets the bucket and the foul as he topples head over heels. Would miss the free throw moments later, Jalen Patterson finds Butts in the corner and Butts delivers from downtown with a three. Imperial Valley trying to answer Shedrick Lockridge on the dribble drive and the floater gets the basket and the foul. He would miss the three throw. Midway through the first half, Matadors in transition. Butts finds a Nate Duda for the bucket. Matadors by six. AWC extending their lead as Marquez Hargrove finds Mohis Mohis on the near elbow. Mohis hits nothing but net. Imperial Valley would make a run though. Lockridge with the drive and the right-handed lay-in. IVC down eight. Then it's going to be Joshua Chamberlain with the drive and he gets the tough shot to fall and draws the foul. IVC down five. Arizona Western would answer Hargrove down low, misses the shot, but Duda is there to clean it up. Matador is starting to pull away. Arizona Western goes on to win this one by a score of 97 to 55. To high school cross country and the Gila Ridge Hawks are really starting to gel as a collective unit on both the boys and girls squads. Back-to-back -back individual district champion Jasmine, Jasmine Estrada, Taylor Ketty, and Marta Ratty are a trio of seniors that are looking to compete for high placings at this weekend's coming Division II state championships. Now on the boys' side, seniors Justin Vandenberg and Eduardo Marquez also come into the state with high ambitions of their own. Now although the Hawks aren't one of the favored front runners going into next weekend, they're going in with a lot of confident, nothing to lose mentality. We've really been emphasizing that anything can happen. Uh, other other teams runners aren't always going to be on their a game and so 
they really just need to focus on being mentally tough going into this weekend and running the race as best as they can. And we think that uh, on both the boys and the girls side, they've got a chance to really take a shot at one of those top, uh, top few positions in the state. And win or lose at state, the Hawks will fly into next season having to replace the 10 seniors on their overall team roster of 24 student athletes. Now to my top plays of the week. Number five is UMAC Catholic Richard Stallworth letting it loose and finding Austin Rush for the 57-yard touchdown during Friday's playoff win. Number four is Calexico's Ernesto Sanchez and Big Earn exits stage left and he shows off his taillights in a 40-yard touchdown run. Bulldogs win a home playoff game for the first time in what seems decades. Number three comes from Holtfield's Cameron Walker. She's on the block, then drops the hammer for the kill and adds a little spice after. Number two is AWC's Tyler Yusua, who makes the save running into the stands. Ani Montano slides to get the ball over the net, and it's a point. And number one is the Central Volleyball team winning the CIF San Diego Section Division 5 title. Congratulations, ladies, and good luck at State this week. That's all the time we have for sports. We'll be right back. All Denny's pancakes are made to order with fresh buttermilk, but this month's Spotlight Stack feels like fall and is the pumpkiniest, pecan pie drizzliest, and most gram-worthy of them all. New pumpkin pecan pancakes this month's Spotlight Stack. See you at Denny's. It's time to find your adventure. Sign me up. Whether you've got courage. Let's go, girl. Uh -huh. Yeah! just want to make new friends. Trust me. There's always a home for you at Girl Scouts. Next ET, fresh off her happy Halloween, our New York night out with Kim K. At the end of the day, life is about being happy. Plus, we're in the ballroom for Queen Night on Dancing with the Stars. I'm so excited. Then, we're turning up Hawaii Week 98 degrees. Nicholas Shea is back to guest co-host. Where's the harmony, Kevin? I, thought we, I, thought I will kill the, the harmony. I will kill the harmony. Next, DT. <laughs> Where's Sean? Where's Sean? I want y'all to hear from me first. If you want to be fresh, you got to refresh like Subway. Like the new Baja Steak and Jack with tender, thicker cut steak Wait, and... Wait, so you're not coming out of retirement? I'm just here because Subway has so much new, they bought time in this press conference to talk about it. Now, like I was saying, the new Baja Steak also has pepper jack cheese, the new Baja Chipotle sauce. Now he can't stop talking. Black olive cup pepper. This holiday at Metro by T-Mobile, the big 5G upgrade just got better. Now with the largest selection of free 5G phones, like the Samsung Galaxy 5G. Plus, get one line of unlimited smartphone data for just 25 bucks a month, with 5G included at no extra cost. All with the power of the T-Mobile 5G network. A free 5G phone and unlimited 5G. That's how you get more for the holidays. From the leader in prepaid, only at Metro. It's been a year, one that, despite our best efforts, we'll always remember. We made it this far together, with some help from our neighbors, our families, and our friends. And that's exactly how we'll be when we cross the finish line, together. So to everyone who helped us get this far, thank you. Before we go tonight, children in the foster care system face uncontrollable situations and are always looking for an outlet. And that's where the Arizona Children Association and the Yuma County Library District come in. The two organizations work together to hold a book drive and in total collected more than 300 books which will be donated to area foster children. Now they believe that books are more than just words on paper. They actually specifically asked for different genres of books, so we did really work hard to make sure that those genres were provided for them. Just the, the simple act of owning your own book uh, really leads to great success in literacy, which of course leads to academic success and lifelong success. 
In Arizona alone, there are more than 14,000 children in foster care. Real quick, let's take another look at your forecast, your seven-day forecast for this week. Veterans Day is on Thursday. Those gusty winds will blow into the area starting Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Another day in the 90s on Saturday. A mild day tomorrow. Those clouds will start to move in. We saw those in the satellite and radar. In the Imperial Valley, breezy conditions tomorrow all the way through Friday. Again, Thursday, Veterans Day, we began another spell of days in the 90s. Yeah, we're still in early November, but the 90s, they are coming Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. That's our newscast. Thank you so much for watching tonight. I'm Scott Gross. Stay safe out there. Stephen Colbert is next.